This Normal Heights front yard is a certified natural habitat. If it's not food, it's not in the yard. It's got to be food for somebody, uh, whether it be a butterfly, a certain type of butterfly, a bee, birds. Ramey Zemiski embraces the tranquil activity that surrounds her home. It's just my little everything's okay spot. Sprinkled among the colorful plants are different so kinds of milkweed. Two, That's important to Zemiski because out back, she's got an entire greenhouse devoted to raising and releasing monarch butterflies. She separates eggs from tiny caterpillars, separates tiny caterpillars from larger ones. They just eat and eat and eat and they don't even stop to poop. They just poop while they're eating. They're just ravenous. So if you have a little guy in there, there's a good chance he's going to get a chunk taken out of him. So it's best to keep them separate. Once the caterpillars have finally eaten enough, they look for a place to hang and form their colorful chrysalis. Unbelievable. Where did he come from? Then Zemiski waits for the orange, black, and white butterfly to emerge. So this guy's got a little more ways to go. And, and with the cooler, darker weather, he might wait a little bit longer. Zemiski welcomes a couple hundred monarch butterflies into the world every month. She says caring for the iconic insects consumes her weekends, and she's willing to spend enough money to make sure there's plenty of milkweed on hand for the process. Monarchs are probably one of the most, if not the most valuable insect in the world. Bryce Simmons works at the Scripps Institution of Oceanography in San Diego. Because people spend a lot of money to plant monarch gardens, they pay a lot of money to go see monarchs in, in Mexico in overwintering or in the eucalyptus groves here, and they have very strong values in, their, in, in, um, in being able to see monarch butterflies. Simmons helped develop a model that predicts the health of the monarch butterflies populations both in the east and western United States. So it turns out that the models that we used to uh, describe how a population changes through time are the same as if we we're modeling fish or monarch butterfly. Those models show a steady and dramatic decline of monarchs on the West Coast. The population topped 1.2 million in the 1990s, and Semmons says the number of migrating monarchs is currently on a perilous perch. And what they use is an, is an extinction threshold, or a point at which the population would hit it, and most likely it would now be in a vortex, an extinction vortex where it won't be able to pull out. And they used as a number 30,000 individuals, 30,000 monarchs. Well, just this last winter, we were below that. Pesticides, storms, and now even climate change are posing problems for the colorful butterfly. What was once a friendly habitat is turning more hostile. Because in really dry, hot years, milkweed doesn't grow so well across the range of where it normally would. And they're obligate breeders on milkweed. They have to have milkweed in order to, to reproduce. And so, to some extent, wherever the milkweed isn't, the monarchs can't be. But Simmons says it's the migration behavior that's likely at risk of going extinct, not the butterfly itself. Volunteers count the migrating butterflies when they gather at overwintering sites, typically a grove of eucalyptus trees near the coast. But many historic wintering spots in San Diego County and elsewhere no longer attract monarchs. The ones here we're pretty sure are not migrating at all. Tom Merriman runs Butterfly Farms in Encinitas, and he raises monarchs to share their story with local children. Here's a monarch egg right here. He knows that the yeah, colorful it's, insects it's face challenges, egg. especially early in their life cycle when well, other insects like flies pose a threat. And there's bacterial infections, there's viral infections. If they get into mold or mildew or fungus, it's going to probably kill them. Uh, so there's, there's a lot that can go wrong, and that's before, that's before any predators even. But he says monarchs are also good at survival. The milkweed they eat makes them noxious to most birds, and their persistent, friendly social behavior might be why the term social butterfly remains popular. It's a really prolific butterfly. They're serious about reproduction. And while the insects are resilient, they do require milkweed for their survival. Fortunately for the monarchs, there is plenty of milkweed in San Diego County. Eric Anderson, KPBS News.